Hi friends, I'm Nancy Jacobs from Embroidery It at EmbroiderYIt.com and you guys, I'm so happy to be here with you today. We're going to make this cute little watermelon coaster. Friends, this is geared for those of you who are new to applique, new to in the hoop. This is going to be a real time video here so you guys can stitch right along with me. The design is over at EmbroiderYIt.com. It is free during the month of June, so if you're watching this during this time, Go over there and snag it right away. If it's after June, yes, there's always something going on over there. It'll be something else next time. So um, anyway, but I hope you catch the video nice and early so you can grab it. And if you miss it, it goes up for sale and it's only $1.50. So, all right. Anyway, that's out of the way. So you, you're going to need the design. Let's go over the other list of the supplies of things that we're going to need. You need your 4x4 four four hoop hooped up with a lightweight tearaway stabilizer. You're going to need two pieces of felt cut five inches square. You can use any color you want, friends. I've chosen white. You're going to need a couple of scraps of fabric for the watermelon, pink for the, the fruit part of the watermelon. If you just have a scrap that's like four inches square, you're good to go with that. And you're going to need a piece of green for the rind portion of it, about a two by four inch square will be perfect. And you'll need several thread colors. I've got white to match my felt, and then you need three additional colors here. Oop, I can't hold on to them. <laughs> okay, I got pink to match my pink cotton fabric, green to match, match my green cotton fabric, and then I chose dark gray for my seeds. You could use black, whatever you want to your friends. And the last thing you're going to want to have on hand is uh, some tape. I just use painter's tape. You're only going to need a little bit. All right, let's get started. We'll put our hoop on the machine. I have my design loaded. I also have white thread in the machine and so it's ready to go. Um, I've got white thread in the bobbin. I've got a standard uh, 7511 needle. Um, doesn't need anything bigger than that for this project. If you've got a larger needle and you're probably going to be okay with that as well. And I am going to lower the computer screen so you guys can watch this stitch and you can see exactly what's happening. This is going to take about 20 minutes, friends. So the first thing that's stitching is the placement stitch and it is going to show us where we're going to place our piece of felt. This just shows us the outline of the design. Now we can take our felt and we're going to just eyeball it, center it over that placement line. And the next thing that's going to stitch is the tack down. If you wanted to tape this, friends, you could. I find with felt, felt is, is it's got a little stiffness to it that I don't feel like it really needs to be taped down. Um, so yeah, just watch it for a few stitches and then it's, it's good to go. All right, and now we're going to get ready to stitch the fruit part of the watermelon. So I'm going to remove my white thread and switch to pink. Now, friends, in my designs, I include what's called a thread chart. And if you follow right along with the thread chart, you can print it out or just watch on your computer. You can see exactly what's coming up. And so again, we're getting ready to do the placement of the pink fabric. And you will notice that the placement line is almost always shown in red thread. That is just kind of a, a standard. So uh, when you, you don't need to actually use red thread is what I'm saying. Just use the color that you're going to use for this portion of the design. So we've got the pink in there, and now I have stitched the placement. I can see exactly where I need to place my pink piece of fabric. And 
again if you want to tape this down friends go right ahead I'm just gonna watch it closely so that it doesn't pucker that felt has a little bit of a tooth to it so it it will hold onto that cotton fabric and I just usually I just never have a problem with that okay that's the tack down that has tacked down our cotton fabric to the felt and stabilizer. Now what we need to do is we need to take the hoop off of the machine. Here's where we're at, but do not unhoop your design. Leave your design in the hoop and get you a little applique scissors. This is what I like to use. These are just kind of my go-tos. They're really meant to just snip threads, but when it comes to uh, snipping the cotton fabric, they work perfect. Um, I have three or four of these floating around my sewing room right now and I do it any given time. Um, they're just the, the ones I always reach for and these are called a spring action scissors. You can find them at your sewing store. Also take note here, oh, put, let me put my hand behind it, maybe you can see it here. This part is, is curved a little bit. Some of them are straight, but I like this because it has a slight a slight curve upward to it that it just is, is perfect for trimming the cotton applique. All right, here's where we're at. I trimmed it close to the stitching. I'm gonna put the hoop back on the machine. And now what it's going to stitch is the decorative satin border that goes around the, the fruit part of the watermelon. And this is going to take just a minute. I've got actually a long thread that didn't get pulled to the bottom. Go ahead and trim that off because I don't want it, I don't want it sticking out later and it's better to trim it off now if we can. So, friends, this, this coaster matches the other coasters that we've been doing each month. So for those of you that have been following along, um, we did the little Easter egg. And on this one, I added a bow and I added a ribbon. And you can see I just sandwiched that in between the front and the back. I'll show you when it gets close to um, the stage. If you wanted to put a ribbon on, how to do that. So it matches, here's our little flower that we did. And so you can see all of the coasters have the same decorative zigzag around the outside of the coaster. And they also have the same decorative satin border too around all of the elements of the design. So this is where they all match, which is kind of nice because what you can do, friends, you can take several of these. If you didn't want, for instance, if you didn't want to do this as a coaster, you could put this on an apron pocket or on the bib of an apron. I think these would look adorable around a little girl's dress, if any of these, around the hem of the dress. So instead of doing the, the, the very first two steps where we did the placement of the, the coaster and the tack down of the coaster, you would just ad advance your machine through those steps in the design and go straight to the watermelon applique. And you could do several of these, I think, around the hem of a little girl's dress would look cute. You could do three of them on the edge of a hand towel, add a pretty ruffle, and, and with that, you would have just a, a sweet, sweet gift for someone. <coughs> Excuse me. You can mix and match these, so you could put several of the designs together. You could, you know, four or six designs that are different, group them all together, put a pretty bow around it, and you have a nice gift set for someone. All right, that finished the satin portion. We're going to take out the pink thread, and now I'm going to replace it with green thread. because we're getting ready to do the rind 
on the watermelon and just like before friends the first thing it's going to stitch is the placement it's going to show us exactly where to place our green fabric so i've got my green fabric ready to go as well Once again, we'll just put our fabric under here, smooth it out nicely, and this, this is the tack down. This is going to tack down that green fabric to the rest of the design. Just like we did with the fruit portion of the watermelon, let's take our hoop off of the machine, but do not unhoop the machine. And again, we'll take our little scissors and we're going to trim close to the edge of the stitching here. Okay, here's where we're at. We'll put the hoop back on the machine. And again with the green thread, now it's going to stitch that decorative satin border. So friends, as it does that, I'm gonna raise up the camera just so we can look at each other a little bit better here this, this way. Um, so anyway, I've been talking, here's some of the designs you just can get have fun with the different just different colors you know just just go go crazy here we did a chicken design I mean I did a chicken that was green and it's just just have fun do something to match your kitchen don't feel like you have to stay with the just the standard colors um, do, do whatever you like but anyway these are some of the designs we've been doing throughout here we get a little mitten for winter time and the, this one is really nice because you could personalize it you could put someone's name or you could put their initial in the mitten and I, you know I've got a video on that so if you look back through my videos I showed on a heart coaster that we did how to actually position someone's name in the heart even if you don't have software. So if you don't have embroidery software, you can still do it. You can still get that name positioned in there just right. Um, we did a four leaf clover. Let's see, here's another egg, Easter egg. This one I didn't add the ribbon and the bow. Here it was a birthday present, or you could do it as Christmas present. This And this one I also did as like a, a gift tag to, to hang on a gift, or you could do it as a Christmas ornament. Here, oh, here's the heart. So here we did the heart, and then here I personalized it with my name. So, yes, there's a lot of, just so many fun things that you can do with your embroidery machine. And, um, like I said, you, you could mix and mix and match, put several different ones together, bundle them up with a cute ribbon. This is great for a teacher gift. It's great for um, uh, a welcome to the neighborhood gift, for uh, birthday gifts. Add them to a tag for as like as a gift tag. Um, just let your imagination go wild. I think. Uh, kids going uh, to dorms if they need some coasters to protect their furniture. And the thing is, is you're just using your scraps. Um, sometimes people will ask me, can you wash them? Yes, you can. I would wash it just by hand in some uh, some warm soapy water. But quite honestly, you know, you're just using your scraps. You, you're going to have one finished in like 20 minutes. Um, after it gets too soiled, quite honestly, then I just throw it away at that point. But you, you can wash them. So anyway, uh, what else? Oh, an embroidery. Yeah. So 
when you make your watermelon. Uh, share it on social media, share it on your Facebook page, share it on Instagram. Use the hashtag embroidery it so along and then we can all find your embroidery designs and we can see what it is that you're making. So if you use the hashtag with the designs that you stitch right along with me, that's a fun way for us to get to know you and uh, to meet you. So, also over at embroideryit.com, I always do a free letter of the week. Right now we're doing this little freestanding lace applique letters. We're on the letter, I think we're on the letter K right now. It changes weekly. So if you miss it this week, you know, then we can, next week is the letter L. They do have up for sale, um, just a, a small price. Um, Anyway, that's a fun thing too that you can catch each week. I have a newsletter that gets sent out weekly to you, so when you're over there at the website, be sure you sign up for the newsletter. I'm not going to spam your inbox. I'm just going to remind you when new designs come out. I'm going to remind you about the sew-alongs, that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, please sign up for the newsletter and join in on the fun. Then. If you haven't tried in the hoop, and applique. Yes, this is a great first project for you to try. I'm going to lower the camera now. It's just finished stitching the green satin border so you guys can see what's happening because we're still not quite finished yet. We've got the decorative satin border here. I got a little thread sticking up. And the next, the next color that's going to stitch is the seeds. So I've got my dark gray thread ready to go. Load this up in my machine. There we go. Well, I hope you all are off to a great summer. Um, I know things have just been busy, busy, busy here uh, for us this summer. We've been, um, well, I've been doing a little bit of traveling myself. I went to see my brother and his family in Kansas City. For those of you that don't know me, I live up in Michigan. I'm outside of Grand Rapids. And um, anyway, so I got to go to Kansas City and see my brother and his family. Uh, my husband and I went to visit his parents in Phoenix. And then we celebrated our 30th anniversary and took a weekend trip up to Mackinac Island here in Michigan. So we have been enjoying the summer and now my travels are over. I'm going to be home for a while. I got the kids home from college. So the house, the house is busy and the house is active right now. This machine, this is a Brother 1250D. The D stands for Disney. The largest hoop size on this brother um, is five by seven. This does not cut jump stitches. So many of you will have machines that will cut the jump stitches. This machine just does not, does not do that. So I have to go back and trim all the little jump stitches. And um, I'm okay with that, that this machine does, it, it's, it's, it does the job, so it's just one little, little, little task I have yet to do. All right, guys, we're not finished yet. We're almost done. Again, we take the hoop off of the machine, but do not unhoop the design because we're not not quite finished. Push the machine out of the way. Here's what the back side looks like right now. And this is the point, friends. If you were wanting to add a ribbon. Now would be the time to get that loop of ribbon and to tuck it up into the design and to tape it so that it would stitch into the design. We're going to take the second piece of felt that we have. We're going to cover the back side of our design with the felt and we're going to get our painter's tape. And we don't, we don't need we don't need much. I get a little bit and then I usually tear it into fourths 
and I stick just a little bit on each corner to hold each corner down. Since this is the bottom side of the design, you really do want to use tape here. All right, so here's what it looks like. And we're gonna turn it over and then carefully, carefully put the design back onto the machine. You don't wanna disturb the back side and the tape there. And I want to change my thread back to pink. You can use any color you like, but um, I want to match the watermelon, so I'm gonna use the pink. And get the machine re-threaded here. Because we're almost done. This is what I love about in the hoop projects. Because you, you finish them in just a very short period of time. So this is stitching a decorative zigzag border around the edge of the design. You can see, here's my maple leaves, but you can see it'll stitch a design that will match this. Um, so this, and this is just the, the last little bit that we have to do here. So if you guys ever have any questions, you can send me an email, or you can leave me a comment. I'm very happy to answer any questions that you have. But I hope if you haven't tried in the hoop and applique, that you'll, you'll give it a whirl here because this, this is such a quick and, and easy project to try that it's, it's a good way to practice and a good way to learn. The other thing we're going to want to have now is I trimmed the edges of my coasters with pinking shears, but you can use straight scissors. If you don't have pinking shears, don't worry about that. Just, just use straight scissors. That's fine. It's just finishing the last little bit. I got my pinking shears handy here. While you're leaving me a comment, you know, let me know. Let me raise the camera up. See, see each other again here. <laughs> um, let me know, you know, what types of embroidery designs you like to stitch. That, that's your favorite. If you like applique and in the hoop, maybe you like freestanding lace. Maybe you like red work or field designs. Um, let me know what you like to stitch on. Do you stitch on T-shirts? Do you stitch on towels? Um, what is it that you like You like to stitch on? Who do you stitch for? Do you stitch for yourself? Do you stitch for your children or your grandchildren? Um, or your pet, maybe? Because there's a lot of fun things that you can do for your pets, too. So you just let me get to know you a little bit. Let me know what you like and or what you don't like. And that helps me know what to create as well for all of you. So this is just finishing up here. I'll lower the camera one last time and we'll see the last little bit as it goes around the corner there. It's finishing up. That's it, friends. And the machine has beeped. It says that we're done. We're gonna take the hoop off and this time, friends, we can unhoop our design. Take it off, we've got the tape there. Let's get that out of the way. Then what I like to do is I like to tear first, just kind of gently tear away this excess stabilizer that's around the edge of the design. And then once that's done, get your scissors here. And I trim, oh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little shyer than that, away from the outside edge of the stitching. You know, I've also had people do these designs. They've used the felt you know, for the, the thickness and the sturdiness of the design. And oh, I thought I had the phone out of here. I'm so sorry, guys. I am not going to answer that. Call from I, quality 
<laughs> don't know who that is. So, so <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. Um, shoot, I just totally forgot to remove the phone. All right, take a look here. Guys, we're done. We're done. They're, they're not giving up. It should go to... <laughs> oh my gosh. It, it should have gone to voicemail like a long time ago. I'm so sorry, you guys. Oh, really? Two phones? I'm so sorry, you guys. This one I can turn off. That one I can just... Sorry, guys. Ah, oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I usually, I just forgot to take him out of the room and to turn him off. So I'm so sorry. You guys, we're done. The only thing I have left to do is um, trim those little jump stitches and we're good to go. All right, you guys, thank you. Thank you for sticking with me. I'm sorry about the phone ringing. Um, join me. I do this as a Facebook Live, usually the second Tuesday of every month over on the Embroidery It Facebook page. So if you want to join me there, and then you can actually watch me live and type me questions and ask me any questions that you might have, um, and I'm very happy to answer them. All right, guys, take it easy. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.